Hey everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood sax man Alex here. If you're new here, check out my Get to Know Me video. Welcome back to another sax head episode with Alex Ramirez. We're going to backtrack a little bit to our Motivic Development mini-series I've been doing in sax head. In a previous episode, we talked about Motivic Development through motifs. Going through a solo, finding a motif while you were improvising, and then developing it into a climax or into whatever you wanted to be during the solo. Today, I wanted to go a little bit further in depth with that into part three of our mini series. This part is crucial in terms of taking bite-sized pieces of your solo and not puking out 10,000 notes. A lot of young players, myself included, want to play 10,000, 10 trilling, a googleplex of notes. But that isn't what a good solo should sound like. If you listen to a lot of great solos like Sonny Rollins, John Coltrane, Thelonious Monk, Freddie Hubbard, to name a few, you may notice sometimes they play a lot of notes, but they're very tasteful. And most of the time, it's not the amount of notes they play, but it's how they play it and certain notes that make the solo great. But enough about that. What we're going to focus on is playing and resting. So we're going to utilize the first part of the mini series which was developing a motif and implement it with playing and resting certain amounts of measures. This concept again was taught to me by Ed Tomasi at Berklee College of Music. He taught me that while developing a motive, it is crucial that you give time for the rhythm section to react to that motive instead of playing over it and making it seem like it's just some part of a line. A lot of young players play beautiful lines and then they create this beautiful motif. And what happens is that motif never gets developed because they want to keep on playing and playing and playing and playing and it never gets developed. We kind of just lose it in time. Players like Lester Young, Ben Webster, and Coleman Hawkins are great examples of using less notes to make a much better story out of their solo. Quality over quantity. Go buy Charmin Ultra. You know, less is more. Charmin Ultra, less is more. This process is not at all easy, and it's definitely one of the hardest things that I've practiced when improvising. So, again, Alex, how do you practice this? Easy. Ed Tomasi gave me really nice parameters for practicing this method. Essentially, what you want to do is develop a motive, and in fact, if you can, write it out, develop it a little bit, and the first step is playing to and resting to, having even measures of playing and resting. A healthy balance. This plays into our four food groups of a healthy jazz solo. If you don't remember what that was, check out my sax head episode on motivic development part one. Step one, take the motive or take a phrase, even take a line. But what you want to do is play for two measures, try to develop a motive in those two measures, rest two, and remember that motive. It is very important that you do that because you are going to respond either to the rhythm section or yourself in the next two measures. I can't stress this enough. Make your phrases simple, easy to remember. Less is more. I know that two measures of a 4-4 give you 32 notes if you're playing 16 notes. As much as that's possible and alluring and enticing, don't do it. Less is more. Now with that being said, do this for an entire tune, whether it be on a blues or a standard. Take it through the tune, see how you're going. It's going to skip over certain parts of the tune. You might rest for the first two bars of another A section that you're not used to doing. And this is a great way of freeing yourself from the restrictions of playing only during certain phrases, whether it be eight measures or 60 measures long, AKA an A section or a B section or a bridge or whatever it may be. You can span your phrases now over sections and still sound good by making the motif clear so that you can respond to it afterwards. Enough blabbing about that. I'll show you how it's done. So sit back, enjoy, and I'll see you in a bit.
this method helps, it really helps me to change the way I view phrasing in certain standards and tunes. <sighs> Thank you for watching the video, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you want me to talk about in the next Saxide episode. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook for more standards, ballads, and beats. Stay sexy! <laughs> ah! Is mayonnaise an instrument? Thank you for watching the video, and I was- Ah!